Namaskaram. We need music and dance to keep calm and give us strength to live through difficult times. Raja Radha Reddy and Kaushalya Reddy is doing great service with the presentation of their Parampara series, a national festival of music and dance, which is in its 24th year. The series endeavors to promote hope, harmony and solidarity. To bring out the true meaning of Parampara, Raja Radha Reddy and Kaushalya Reddy have delved deep into their archival material and brought out costly gems to be passed on to the upcoming generations to inspire them to carry forward the tradition we have inherited. This novel idea of holding a mammoth festival during these pandemic times to keep our tradition afloat is all the more unique because people in every nook and corner of the world will be able to see this. Today, our focus is on Lokendra Jit Singh, who was born in the year 1958. But unfortunately, he left this world too soon in the year 2018. Sri Vankhem Lokendra Jit Singh received his initial training in Manipuri dance under Guru L. Amu Yaima Singh and Babu Singh. Later, he specialized in Manipuri dance from Jawaharlal Nehru Manipuri Dance Academy, Imphal. Well versed in Thangta, the martial art form of Manipur and the percussion instrument Pung, Lokendra Jit Singh further studied choreography under the guidance of Maya Rao at the Natya Institute of Choreography, New Delhi. He is a recipient of the Fulbright Scholarship and has won critical acclaim as a dancer and choreographer. He joined the production unit of JNMDA Imphal as a dancer in 1985 and was appointed choreographer in 2009. He has toured extensively with the production unit of JNMDA both in India and abroad for performances in the festivals of India for his contribution to contemporary and experimental dance he has received the prestigious Sangeet Natak Academy Award among other accolades. A flag bearer of Natasankirtana, one of the pillars of Manipuri dance, he possessed the qualities of a dedicated guru and an exemplary choreographer. Teaching and guiding were his two cardinal principles. He loved choreography for it is inclusive of both performing and teaching. He was equally at ease with performing major or minor roles. It was the success of his choreographic work that mattered to him and that is what made him click with his audience in three areas choreographing, performing and teaching. He loved the movements of Natasankirtana which he was which he has used extensively in his production Moirang Shah which was his all-time favorite. His work Vainu Pareng is also a favorite with him because he created its contemporary movements from Thangta and classical movements of Manipuri dance. Composing solos were his pet works, dance dramas with environmental, social, historical and mythological themes 
interested him. Having drawn inspiration from late Guru Priyogopal Sana and Maya Rao, he has, as a mentor, nurtured the talents of his disciples. Amusana Devi, Ibemubi Devi, Nayan Sakhi Devi are some of his disciples who have been blessed by his help to choreograph memorable pieces. He loved playing roles, whether it is minor or major, in his choreographic work. As Hauba from Lokta Kishai, he loved his part. Kading in Thanja Hauba of Kebul Lamjao was another role he loved playing. The role of Moirang Shah in his drama of the same name was close to his heart. He played the role of Shukracharya in Rabindranath Tagore's Vidai Abhishak. Lokendra Jit felt that without a sound knowledge of Pung Cholam and the instrument Pung, as well as the dance forms of Manipur and the knowledge of time, space and energy, one should not venture out to be a performer. Though he felt change is inevitable in all forms of art, preservation of Manipur's culture and dance styles was most important to him. I offer my humble obeisance to Guru Raja Radha Reddy and Kaushalya Reddy as well as to the connoisseurs and Rasikas who are watching this today. Namaskaram. In the second segment, if I may be allowed, I now shift your attention from Northeast India, from the land of Manipur to the southernmost part of India, Kerala, the home of the dance form known as Mohiniyattam. Mohiniyattam is the dance of the Mohini. We hear of Mohini when Lord Vishnu himself takes the form of Mohini or the Enchantress during the churning of the milk ocean for the nectar of immortality. Mohini uses her charm to seize the Amrita from the Asuras and give it to the Devas to attain immortality. The dance form is ancient. Though much of it remains in antiquity and awaits scholars to do the needful, much work has been done and much work remains to be done. However, in the 1930s, when the great poet of Kerala, Vallathol Narayana Menon, founded Kerala Kalamandalam, he along with his friend Mukundaraja tried to revive the form now known as Mohiniyattam. Their search for a guru led them to Kalyani Amma. But for a student, the program could not be launched until Mukundaraja found Tangamani who later married Guru Gopinath and left Kerala Kala Mandalam. However, after this, there was no looking back for Mohiniyattam. The tree of Mohiniyattam grew its branches manifold. There were many takers. Mohiniyattam is the most beautiful and complete language of movements through which the Indian dancer provides a concrete manifestation of her inner state and realizes the vision of her existence and truth of all her experiences. Septuagenarian Kalamandalam Sugandhi Prabhu, a very well-known Mohiniyattam dancer, has enriched Mohiniyattam 
with her contribution to its theory and practice. She has been the cynosure of the critics' eyes for her choreographic work in Mohini Atam. A lyricist and a composer of no mean repute, she has used them in her work. She has also translated Padma Subramaniam's Bharata Kala Kotupada from Tamil into Malayalam. A recipient of Sangeet Natak Academy Award, she confessed that her association with Padma Subramaniam has been a turning point in her career. She was able to trace the origin of dance forms through her study of the Natya Shastra under her. She is a performer par excellence. Mohini Atam exponent Dr. Nina Prasad, founder principal of Bharatanjali Academy of Indian Dances, Tiruvanantapuram, and Saugandhika Center of Mohini Atam, Chennai, is, a, is proficient in Bharatanatyam, Kuchipudi, Kathakali, and Mohini Atam. A disciple of Kalamandalam Sugandhi Prabhu, she is richly endowed with both beauty and brains. A PhD from Rabindra Bharati University, Kolkata, for her thesis, Concepts of Lassia and Tandava in the Classical Dances of South India, a detailed study. She also has a postdoctoral research fellowship from AHRB Research Center for Cross-Cultural Music and Dance Performance, University of Surrey. Her PhD thesis looks at the concepts from the classical canons of aesthetics from Bharata and other leading scholars of the Rasa theory. Nina Prasad has done much service to Mohini Atam and is an acclaimed Mohini Atam dancer. Mohini Atam is her first love. She has seen much of the world through her performances in the festivals of India and through her national seminars and lecture demonstrations. There is no festival in India worth the name where Nina Prasad has not performed. In association with her guru Kalamandalam Sugandhi Prabhu, she has made a vocabulary that has 116 adabus, 18 charis spread across 17 groups. She is ever in the process of discovering the roots of the tradition to build a bridge between practice and theory. She has numerous choreographic works to her credit and audiences all over the globe has come to love the form after seeing her perform. Her passion elevates her dance through her acquired technique and abhinaya which connect her to the soul of nature and binds her to the cosmos. This is what I have to say about the two most beautiful Mohini Atam dancers. Namaskaram.